Jamaica is a very free and liberal country. The people are very expressive. There are issues here which are, as you would know, unresolved. Your presence gives an opportunity for those issues to be placed in context, put front and center, and to be addressed in as best as we can. But Jamaica is, as you would see, a country that is very proud of our history, very proud of what we have achieved, and uh, we are moving on. We intend to attain in short order our development goals and fulfill our true ambitions as an independent, developed, prosperous country. Hypocrites and parasites, Lord. <laughs> Or should we say wolf in sheep clothing? <laughs> Yo, welcome back to SoFlo TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most, McComb for Talk. And you know when I talk, I talk. Just hit that subscribe button, please. And let's get right into this material. So, we were having a spirited debate, discussion among ourselves, friends and colleagues about Andrew Holness, the Right Honorable Andrew Holness, Jamaica's Prime Minister and his appointment to the Queen's Privy Council in the UK. One person was saying, so Flo, you feel like Andrew appointment to Privy Council is going to affect Vibes Cartel's appeal? And then another person said, do you think that Andrew's appointment to Privy Council in the UK at the Queen's request is going to affect Jamaica separating the queen as head of state in jamaica and becoming a republic itself which means simply that the crown would have to relinquish its head of state position in other words they would have to give away the slave yard then do you think that andrew's position at privy council is going to affect all of that some people are looking very forward in jamaica to jamaica becoming a republic and separating itself from the crown and from the kingdom in the uk and therefore becoming a republic we're going to talk about that there are two articles here which i know that a lot of people are busy and you don't have time to read but i read and break it down for you so you just catch it in listening format the first one which was very interesting was printed a while back by caribbean national weekly.com should Prime Minister Andrew Holness keep his Privy Council appointment? Remember the two questions that are on hand. Will his appointment to Privy Council affect Vibes Cartel's appeal? That's for the dancehall crowd and Vibes Cartel fans. And then for the political um, people, will his appointment to Privy Council stop Jamaica from becoming away from the crown in other words a republic then okay so the queen of england has given the prime minister andrew holness one more nominal title post nominal title that became effective may 26th of 2022 the country's leader was appointed a member of the uk privy council and should now be addressed as the most honorable andrew holness on pc mp prime minister of jamaica most honorable is now added to his title andrew holness is expected and was expected and did attend a meeting of the privy council at the first convenient opportunity that he had to take his oath and he has done so we're going to talk about the oath that was taken and we're going to talk about loyalty to jamaica versus loyalty to the crown this is a very deep discussion okay my granny always say you can't serve two masters in other words you can't be loyal to how is it possible for someone to be loyal to you and then be loyal to your enemy not saying that the uk is jamaica's enemy but if you're thinking about jamaica going to the uk and asking or demanding reparations and then jamaica's prime minister is appointed as a member of the queen's council at privy council then it, it kind of blurs the line after he takes that oath we'll talk about the oath in a minute 
Other Jamaicans to be given such honorable honor includes the former Prime Minister Sir Alexander Bustamante. He got that in 1964, and y'all know how his relationship was with Afrocentricity and Rasta and so on and so forth. Then you had Hugh Shearer, who got the same title in 1969, and then Edward Siaga, who got the same title in 1981, and PJ Patterson in 1992. Former Chief Justice Edward Zaka was also given the distinction in September of 1992. Now, the former Prime Minister, which I did not know, Michael Manley, he was also invited to the Privy Council, the same uh, invitation that was extended to Andrew Holness during his tenure as Prime Minister from 1972 to 1980. But the former Prime Minister, Michael Manley, he respectfully declined. He respectfully declined. All others accepted it. But since Andrew Holness' appointment was announced, at the time it was announced, social media went ablaze with questions, concerns, and consternation. What does this appointment mean for the Prime Minister and what will his duties be? Where am I going to do a Privy Council? How will it benefit Jamaica and its people, especially in light of Jamaica's position on a vexing issue with Britain, such as talks to remove the Queen as head of state and also talks to gain reparations for the institution of slavery or chattel slavery, which the UK or Great Britain profited from greatly? Again, people are asking, with the prime minister being appointed and having to take this oath which swears allegiance how is that going to work out how is reparation going to work out for jamaica and how is removing the queen as head of state in jamaica going to work out all right first of all what is the privy council and Caribbean Nation National Weekly did a fine job of detailing so the privy council function as a set of councillors to the British Sovereign, known as the Lords of Her Majesty's Most Honorable Privy Council, appointed by the Queen or King on the advice of the government. The entire body is divided into committees and their main duty is to, av to advise His or Her Majesty on matters not delegated by the Crown or those that are assigned to it by the British Parliament. Now, one of the more active committees in the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, it handles judicial acts as the final court of appeal for Britain and many current and former Commonwealth countries, including Jamaica. Persons who are given the opportunity to serve Her Majesty on the Council are mainly politicians, including Commonwealth Prime Ministers, cabinet ministers, opposition leaders, the cabinet secretary, leaders of large parties, senior parliamentarians and ministers, the heir apparent to the British monarchy, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Archbishop of York, and the Bishop of London are all sure picks on that council. It is also customary for prime ministers of countries that have the monarch as head of state to be appointed, which is how Andrew Holness is there, because it is customary for prime ministers of countries that have the monarch as head of state. The queen was the head of state for Jamaica until her passing, and now the king who succeeded her is. People have questions. How will Andrew Holness be able to demonstrate allegiance to two countries? Now, now that Mr. Holness has been appointed, he will, which he did already, travel to England and take office after agreeing to an oath. Here is the oath, words of the oath I will read to you. According to Caribbean National Weekly, it says, You do swear by Almighty God, to be a true and faithful servant unto the Queen's Majesty as one of Her Majesty's Privy Council. You will not know or understand of any manner of thing to be attempted, done, or speak or spoken 
against Her Majesty's person, honor, crown, or dignity royal, but you will let and withstand the same to the uttermost of your power and either cause it to be revealed to Her Majesty herself or to such of her privy council as shall advise Her Majesty of the same. You will in all things be moved, treated, and debated in council faithfully and truly declare your mind and opinion according to your heart and conscience and will keep secret all matters committed and revealed unto you and keep secret all matters committed and reveal unto you or that shall be treated of secretly in council and if any of the said treaties or councils shall touch any of the councillors you will not reveal it unto him but you will keep the same until such time as by the consent of her majesty or the council publication shall be made thereof you will to your uttermost bear, bear faith and allegiance to the queen's majesty and will assist and defend all jurisdictions preeminences and authorities granted to her majesty and annexed to the crown by acts of parliament or otherwise against all foreign princes persons prelates states or potentates and generally in all things you will do as a faithful and true servant ought to do to her majesty so help you god that is what it the oath that was taken is so this basically breaks down to this and sounds like this to me it sounds like anywhere Andrew hears anything that's being said bad about the queen, about the crown, about the king, about the monarchy. He will do his utmost best to make sure that they know about it and that nothing, no harm comes their way then, pretty much. He will be a good servant unto them. In order to be a good servant unto them, you must act in their interest, correct? Okay, losing Jamaica... Having Jamaica become a head of state, I don't think it's in their best interest, right? Having Jamaica get reparations for chattel slavery that took place there on those sugarcane plantations that were in Jamaica and the buck-breaking farms, I don't think giving reparations is in their best interest, you understand? So, the question again remains, how will he be able to honor this oath and be faithful to this oath to be faithful to the crown and its best interests or the monarchy and its best interests while serving the people of jamaica answer that in the comment section below now upon agreement prime minister andrew holness became the fourth jamaican head of government to hold this office and he will be required to travel to britain for meetings but can the Jamaican Prime Minister uphold allegiance to the Queen while still doing so upholding allegiance to his own country, which is Jamaica? Jamaica, the oath of allegiance for Jamaica, Jamaica government ministries or ministers says, I, blank, would put your name in there like you would say, I, Andrew Holness, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica, that I will uphold and defend the constitution and the laws of Jamaica, and that I will conscientiously and impartially discharge my responsibilities to the people of Jamaica, so help me God. That is our oath in Jamaica that people like Andrew Holness take. Now, if you listen to that oath, compare it to the oath that was taken to the queen and the monarchy, that oath for the queen and the monarchy is a much deeper oath. Furthermore, Jamaica wants reparations. Jamaica is now at odds with Britain because of the lack of interest from the slave 
reparations, money. Uh, Britain is not too forthcoming as far as rolling out the dough. A call that was made by former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller from as far back as 2013 has gotten the same response from the British government in recent times. Not interested. Okay? That's what Britain says. I'm not interested in giving you any reparations. Now, y'all must also remember, Portia Simpson Miller, our first female Prime Minister in Jamaica, she also called for the removal of the head of state, which was the Queen at the time. And, when, and then she was also not invited to Privy Council like Andrew was, right? Also, when she went to the UK to be a part of their meeting and gatherings, the Queen did not meet with her. The Queen sent a representative to meet with her, but the Queen met with Andrew Holness. Matter of fact, a part of this ceremony that Andrew must also go through while taking his oath, which he has done, was to also kneel before the Queen and kiss the back of her hand and all that, right? Or the king, if it was a king. But in his time, it was the queen. And it was right before she passed. Now, I don't know. I wasn't behind doors. I didn't see if he did actually kiss the hand. But that is a customary part of the ritual. Furthermore. All right. So, Britain is saying they're not interested. Portia Miller Simpson was pushing for it. We're not interested in talking about no reparations. Strangely, Portia Simpson Miller, a woman who hailed from humble origins in rural Jamaica, she was not appointed to Privy Council during her tenure as Prime Minister, which tells me that she was pushing an agenda that was against the Crown's best wishes. You understand? Andrew pushes agendas that are for the Crown's interest in Jamaica, and that's the reason why he was given such an elevated position. Y'all following? Okay, so Jamaica's culture minister, Olivia Grange, said that she wants to petition Her Majesty for compensation for all the nation's citizens. Olivia Grange further stated that we are hoping for repertory justice in all forms that one would expect if they have to really ensure that we get justice from injustices to repair the damages that our ancestors experienced. Listen, the reparations is not about repairing damages that our ancestors experienced. Repar our ancestors are already gone. Dead and gone people cannot, you cannot repair what damage you did to dead and gone people. Dead as in no longer on the face of the earth. Of course, their spirits still live on. Reparations are about changing, using what was owed and robbed from people, repaying it to them so that they can use it to elevate themselves and repair the damages that came from those times that have trickled down all the way into these present times now. That's what reparations is about. Another question is, how can a Jamaican head of government fight for Jamaica while simultaneously swearing to obey and be a counselor to the Queen and the British government? Does this make sense to y'all? I remember when I told Jamaicans in 2017 that Jamaica is not independent. Jamaica still has the Queen listed as head of state. I was surprised to see how many Jamaicans did not know that the Queen flexes superpowers in Jamaica. Doesn't have to ask anybody anything either to exercise her powers. Now we keep saying the Queen even though the Queen has passed. God bless her soul. But the king still stands as the same thing a representation of the monarchy and they are still head of state for jamaica but the real question is how being appointed to the british privy council and having the letter pc behind mr holness's name benefits the people of jamaica at this time it would be interesting to hear what your thoughts are on such matter. Now let's run through this article that the Jamaica Gleaner had published 
in July 13th of 2021, this might have slipped under a lot of people's noses. I will be quick with it, so listen carefully. And it said, it is not this newspaper's intention to rob Prime Minister Andrew Holness of any glory from his appointment to Her Majesty's Most Honorable Privy Council, which was announced last week by the Governor General Sir Patrick Allen and rebroadcasted by the Office of the Prime Minister. Now, y'all know the Governor General's position. He gets word directly from the Queen and or the Crown, or her representative, so to speak, and then passes it to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister must also go to the Governor General with his plans and it is approved through the boss. So we look at the Governor General as the overseer. He is the middleman. It's like Jesus Christ and God. And in order to go, according to Christianity, and in order to get to God, you must go through the sun. That kind of thing. Okay. So at some convenient time, Mr. Holness will be sworn in. And he was. He will be initiated as a privy counselor. And he was. At a ceremony that normally involves kneeling before the sovereign and reciting an ancient oath that includes pledges of allegiance to the queen. The period leading up to the initiation is an opportunity for the Prime Minister to reflect on Jamaica's constitutional agreements, including whether he still believes that Jamaica should separate themselves from the monarchy and become a republic. It is a matter on which Mr. Holness might wish to have a chat with Her Majesty at the ceremony. Now, the Queen has passed since. Giving her a heads up, of his planned timetable for the move you all remember uh, the prince coming to jamaica and andrew holness saying it to him publicly that we have this plan and we made fun of andrew because the way he said it was like he said it with such reserve as if he wasn't really serious and to this day we haven't heard anything of them his administration making moves to separate the queen as head of state of jamaica and make jamaica a republic even though he said it publicly his intentions to do so now in the meantime mr holness should update jamaicans on these constitutional questions and what if any work his government has done to advance the matter indeed we have heard little from his administration on the issue since the last general election, which gave Prime Minister Holness Jamaica's Labour Party a large parliamentary majority. Queen's advisory body. Now, with respect to the Privy Council, not to be confused with its judicial arm, the judicial arm is the arm that would take care of the Vibes Cartel. And I know the Vibes Cartel people are waiting to hear this part. Will... Will Andrew Holness' position at Privy Council have anything effect on Vibes Cartel's outcome of his appeal? Okay, this is the part you listen to. So with respect to the Privy Council, not to be confused with its judicial arm, which serves as Jamaica's final court, of which Mr. Holness is not a member. It serves as an advisory board to the Queen in formulating her orders in council. It is made up primarily of British politicians and sometimes this is the part that Andrew is a part of. He is a part of the advisory body to the Queen or now to the King or the Crown or whoever is on the Crown, the throne, in formulating orders in council. It is made up primarily of British politicians and sometimes the leaders of those Commonwealth countries that retain the British monarch as their head of state. Former Jamaican Prime Minister P.J. Patterson, Edward Siaga, they were members, we said that already, but in practice, it is a relatively small group of officials, mainly UK government ministers, who attend the meeting. I read somewhere else from out of the UK that it was some 720 members. Perhaps the most significant order in council relating to Jamaica issued in the island's modern history is the one that gave effect to our 1962 independence constitution. It was signed with W.G. Agnew, a British civil servant who was senior clerk to the Privy Council or the body's top bureaucrat. Hmm. 
top bureaucrat. In other words, Jamaica's constitution is not a creature of the island's parliament. It wasn't made up in Jamaica. As Lloyd Barnett, the constitutional scholar, observed in an article in this newspaper last December, Jamaica's constitution is an appendix to an order in council made by the Queen in England and therefore is a subsidiary instrument to a British order. On a deaf? On a deaf? All right. Rewind and go over that part again. I won't say it again. It's formal reparation as a Jamaican instrument approved. It's formal repatriation as a Jamaican instrument approved by its parliament would, in the circumstances, be a significant symbol of ownership of our sovereignty. You hear that? On a deaf? All right. Mr. Holness has not up to now specifically addressed the issue in this context but has in the past and his party previously made it a pledge in its election manifesto declared support for ditching the queen as head of state and replacing her titular representative the governor general with a non-executive president so the governor general would be out of a job and the queen would no longer be or that the monarch would no longer be accepted as head of state while andrew is be and right when he decided that he supports that idea he was invited to be a member of the privy council and we have not heard any more talks about that again <laughs> now that's funny stuff there mate you let me say it again Andrew Holness, in his election manifesto, this is where politicians tell the people, I'm going to make sure that this island is so safe by the time I'm done. I'm going to fight crime so hard that you will be able to sleep with your windows and your doors open. That's the manifesto, right? In his last election manifesto, he declared support for ditching the queen as head of state and replacing her titular representative, which is the governor general, with a non-executive president. Right after he did that, shortly after, he got notified that he was selected to be a part of the queen's council at Privy Council in the UK, which would require him flying over there, bowing before her, taking an oath, kissing her hand, and swearing allegiance to the monarchy at a time when Jamaica was trying to separate her as head of state, at a time when Jamaica was going at the monarchy for reparations and they were butting heads. So you do the maths to that. Now, given that the monarchy is deeply entrenched in the constitution, Remember, they just said they own our sovereignty and they also just said that Jamaica's constitution as it is today was developed in the same place in England and transferred to Jamaica. All right. Made by the Queen in England. It is an appendix. Jamaica's constitution is an appendix to an order in council made by the Queen in England and therefore is a subsidiary instrument to a British order. It's formal repatriation as a Jamaican instrument approved by its parliament would, in the circumstances, be a significant symbol of ownership of our sovereignty. You see, true, we now read them say all kind of something in front of we, you know, as Jamaican people, and we just brush past them because we not reading. The only thing most Jamaicans are reading these days are on social media where they read people's comments and respond there while the real information is being put out before us in these publications so when you look around 10 years from now 20 years from now when life slows you down a little bit and you decide to start figuring out what's going on they can look at you and say well damn we told you that 20 years ago we printed it publicly 20 years ago well that's what i'm here for okay so that part there grab me and drip me up like say you know when you catch teeth yeah boy 
Okay, so given that the monarchy is deeply entrenched in the constitution, the parliamentary maneuvers for its change would have to include a referendum. However, there is already cross-party consensus on this issue. At the same time though, Mr. Holness also wants to bundle into the referendum the question of Jamaica's repeal of its boogery law as well as leaving the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council and making the Caribbean Court of Justice or CCJ Jamaica's final court. Although a referendum is not a constitutional requirement in either of those. So basically, he's just throwing everything into the pot, right? Knowing damn well that none of that stuff is going to stick. Dr. Barnett had hoped that the repatriation of the constitution, accession to the CCJ, the CCJ being the council, being the Caribbean Court of Justice, and entrenchment of the Electoral Commission of Jamaica in the constitution would be in place by the time Jamaica celebrates its 60th anniversary of independence in August of 2022. Guess what? We are in March of 2023. That did not happen, has not happened, and is not going to happen anytime soon. Why? Because Andrew Holness has sworn allegiance to the monarchy in the UK. Now, but with the seeming inaction of the government, inaction, may I say the word again, inaction, with the seeming inaction of the government, the inability to take action, no action going on of the government on any of the big constitutional or govern, governance matters that were on its agenda, that now seems a forlorn hope. Unless Prime Minister Holness, now that he is a privy councillor, is excited or exited into action which ain't gonna happen he took the oath he must stand by them and he will stand by so uh one person says two points that i would like to bring to the attention of my fellow jamaicans and one is that we need to free ourselves from mental slavery not none but ourselves can free our minds hail the most honorable robert nesta marley words off the next thing i like to say is a large percentage of jamaicans would give up their jamaican citizenship for a chance to work and live in the uk under the control and direction of the former colonial masters what does that say about the leadership of jamaica since its independence very good one raymond d grant says now, because of the failure of political leadership by both parties, there is no political traction for constitutional reform, my friend. Although both parties claim to want constitutional change because of this failure of leadership, most Jamaicans cannot see any benefits from constitutional reform, so the movement to reform the constitution languishes. Mm. Blame it on the people? Much? Wow. Wow. It's government's job to govern. Yeah. Lucy says, hmm, more pressing, more pressing issues than monarchy. Ask the majority of the people and they would gladly have reversed independence if they could have the freedom to travel to the UK without a visa. So this person says most Jamaicans, if you ask them right now, give back your independence or so-called independence go back under british rule completely and with that will come your ability to just buy a plane ticket and head over to the uk instead of needing a visa to go and most of them would say yes give me that take back the the, the independence because it never real anyway and give me the ability to just enter the uk just buy a ticket and go because then all i would have to do is save up money for my ticket Make sure I get to the UK and then I'm not coming back to Jamaica. I, mean, I go over there go look a better life for myself, right? And then <laughs> Rusty Odred says, yep. And that's why they are all still slaves. Chris King Iron says, payback for holding off the dress of the queen. The beautiful leader has not yet born. Somebody asks, will he be knighted Sir Andrew Holness? What else? 
will he sell because his soul is gone already not a good image this is a big letdown says most people so let's end this by answering the question again all right the question was will andrew holness's position at the privy council affect the vibes cartels appeal and just catering to the cartel fans as i am one myself and concerned about his appeal the answer to that says no it says that andrew is not or the right honorable andrew holness he is not a part of the judicial branch which serves as jamaica's final court of appeals the highest court he is not a part of that he is a part of the queen's council right so that has nothing to do with where he's at there if that answers your question the next one was how will this work with removing the monarchy king or queen as head of state for jamaica and how will this work for jamaica getting reparations from the uk well here's my answer andrew's appointment to privy council means no rep no reparations for jamaica or jamaicans for chattel slavery anytime soon okay and could certainly affect vibes cartel's freedom the reason why i think it could affect it is because although he is not a part of the judicial branch it is still one big circle of people and although it's different parts they work in they still pass word around to each other so you you understand what i'm saying so if andrew is passing around good words it might affect and if he's passing around bad words also it might affect hmm. my problem is this vibes cartel is a person like this he's said it before publicly he respects the queen or he respects the king or that position the throne the monarchy their position but i don't think that vibes cartel is one of them that was that would bow down and say sell out himself then if it meant reparations for us versus him getting a position at privy council i think cartel would be the type of person to choose reparations for us therefore he would not be in their favor as someone who would lead because they want someone who can lead the people into forgetting that we were owed reparations by them they want someone who can lead the people into forgetting about the talks about removing the monarchy as head of state in jamaica they need that kind of person right to keep the people in jamaica kissing bowing before the monarchy and kissing the, the back of their hand and andrew holness has sworn to be that person and he is that person see with that said let me leave this one right here. Leave your comments in the comment section below and tell me what you think about this one. And I will catch you on the next video. It's SoFlo TV. When I already know enough. Be able to self. <laughs> I'm out. Peace.